Hello everybody and welcome back to the Monguli Show. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gwenpool event and how to unlock her free to play, as well as the return of a Cosmic Crucible Alliance event, and our first real event for how to get gear tier 18 to get your character ready for Dark Dimension 6. Let's get into it. Alright, so they're switching the blog around on us a little bit here. You can see now we've got all of the events happening at the very top instead of at the very bottom. So you can kind of see what's coming up for your week. And I kind of like that. It gives you just a first quick blast of everything going on. You've got the boldened events for the things that are a little bit more special. So something a little bit out there. But you've also got your like regular orb blitzes, your nowhere sieges, your chaos theories. Like all your flash events are still there ready to go. So it does give you a nice little view of everything all at once. You can just take a look really quickly and be like, oh, that's what's doing this week. It's kind of cool. Super small little change, but you know, I, I don't hate it. All right, so the first one we're going to look at is Out of This World. This is your free-to-play way to unlock Gwenpool. You're going to get her at three stars. You can work towards that fourth star, but there are not enough shards to actually get there unless you start opening the Pool Party Orb. And we'll, we'll talk about the orbs in a second. But for most people, a three-star three unlock is very doable, and we'll get into how there's a couple of different ways you can work towards it. So here we've got the graph, and we'll look at that in a second. But what we're going to be doing is starting on Tuesday, this is a six day event solo, you're gonna be doing raid battles. Now you cap out, so you get 100,000 points per raid battle and you cap out at 10 million. So you can do this 102 times over six days. Turns out to be 17 raid battles a day, which is pretty doable. You can do about 20 before you start having to spending cores. So 17 is okay, that's not so bad. That will not get us even halfway though to what we want. We want to get down to here. That's where you're going to unlock your spec and Gwen, or your three star Gwenpool. You'll also get 100,000 Blazing X genes towards the mail, the milestone event. So that's really good. But the Gwenpool that we're actually working towards here. So that's what we're going to be looking at. It's 21 million points you're going to need to get. So 10 million points, just a little bit under halfway there. So how are we going to get the rest of the way? Well, at first, I thought you had to open these orbs. And each orb is going to be worth some amount of gold and they don't tell us how much gold is each orb so it's hard to do the math on that but essentially you're going to need to make up another 10 million 800 thousand points to get all the way up to unlock your gwen pool if you want to do that that's going to be 15 of these pool party orbs or 18 of the super rad gear uh 54 of the pretty sweet gear or 44 of the sciency tech stuff I don't know how much they're going to cost, but I'm guessing that's going to be an awful lot of gold. So that's not the way you want to go. What are these actual orbs? Well, the pool party orb opens Gwen character shards. So you're going to be able to unlock her, maybe get her up to a four star if that's the route you want to go. Science techie stuff, ISO 8 research, super rad gear, gear tier 16 and 17, and pretty sweet gear is gear tier 14 and 15. Again, no math on what these actual cost, but I'm guessing they're going to get more expensive as they work their way down, obviously. Gwenpool will probably be the most expensive one, maybe 675 No, that's what it would cost if it was orbs. I have no idea what it's going to cost for gold. So, if we go down here, those numbers sound pretty uh, rough. You're going to have to spend a lot of gold for this event. But, thankfully, there is a web milestone event that you can also do just by playing campaign energy. Now, I'm going to assume you cannot use ISO 8 energy. That's this will be simply campaign energy. So one for one ratio, you need to spend a thousand campaign energy a day to get 1.6 million a day points towards the milestone event. That's really good. If you do that all uh, six days, you're gonna get 9.6 million points towards the event. You only need a 10.8, so you're almost there. Now you only need 1.2 million points. So if we go back and look at these orbs, all of a sudden now you only need two pool party orbs, two super rad, and by the way, these are like two total, like you don't need all these put together, you just need like two pool party orbs, you're done. But I'm going to break it down in case you don't want Gwen pool shards for some reason. Uh, pool party shards, you need two, super rad orbs, two, pretty sweet orbs, six, or science techie stuff, five. That's way more reasonable. Again, we don't know what they're going to cost, we don't know what the gold cost is, but that seems far more doable and all you have to do is spend some campaign energy. So basically it comes down to do you have more gold to spend or do you have more orbs to spend? I personally have more orbs at this point. My gold's running a little bit shy. We've had too many events back to back and too many characters that are good and worth upgrading. So 
this is probably the route that I'm going to take, but you can go either way. And that's kind of nice. You can also work your way down uh, further on the pool. There are an additional 20, uh, sorry, 40 Gwen pool shards that you can get. Plus they gave us five for free Friday. So that'll put you at 45. So you're over halfway towards your uh, level, your, your four star. So that's not terrible if you've got the gold to spend. And I mean, obviously you have the gold to spend, you spend on pool party, you're even that much closer to getting your pool, your Gwen pool. So I don't think this is a bad event. I think it's actually fairly friendly for free to play players. So uh, great, get your Gwen pool. She's gonna be an amazing Cosmic Crucible character. I don't necessarily see her being played too much outside of Cosmic Crucible, but in Cosmic Crucible, she's gonna be a necessary evil. So there's that. There is a leaderboard, do your best. Uh, Trials and Tribulation, this is going to be a three-day event for your alliance starting on Monday. If your alliance is participating in Cosmic Crucible like they should be, this is going to be a pretty easy event. You're going to get a thousand points for each Cosmic Crucible battle. Oh, I, I just, I thought it was, oh, win. Sorry, it is a win. I half cut off there on the screen. Uh, if you win your Cosmic Crucible battle, you get a thousand points. If you win all six of your Cosmic Crucible battles and you do it all three days, if your entire alliance does just that, forget about the new wars, forget about, forget about spending power cores, that's going to be over 400,000 points. 432,000 points. You only need 300,000. So there is some wiggle room just from that. If you do use your new warriors, that's just points on top of that. And you can do that for every, uh, there's three new warriors out right now. Gwenpool would be your fourth if you unlock her in time, which you probably won't unless you pay for it. Anyways, sorry, rambling now. Uh, that's just additional points. Obviously, power cores are just points. So you have some wiggle room if you've got a member who's away on vacation or a member you're down to like 22, 23 members in your alliance. Like you don't have to have 24 players. You don't have to have every single person win every single match all three days. There is some wiggle room. Uh, and if you do complete this, you will get 39,000 Blazing X genes towards the monthly, um, as well as some teal gear, some augmented stuff. So this is actually pretty decent, assuming you're in a decent enough alliance that's up to you like yeah, there's a lot of good alliances out there yeah, get into one that's at your play level milky way malevolence this is simply a masters of evil blitz we're not going to spend time on this the masters of evil are mostly new characters so the odds of you having all of them at seven stars is slim but it's a blitz event you'll have this done in no time and you'll get however many blazing x genes i didn't even do the math it's we do this every week it's fine Geared for Glory is an interesting event. It's one of your best ways to be getting uh, early gear tier 18 for your characters. And they have said in a previous blog post that gear tier 18 is going to be ridiculous. It is not going to be a simple like incremental stat. It is going to almost double your characters. So this is huge. And unfortunately, it's going to be really heavily skewed towards people who spend money. So I hope this doesn't just straight up break the game. They keep talking about it like they're really excited for it and we should be really excited for it, but I can't help but be a little bit nervous for it because I don't have very many characters at gear tier 17 yet. I'm finally starting to do really well in the arena. I'm in like the top 20. I've made it down into the top 10 once. But if all of a sudden I start running into characters who have gear tier 18 because they're, they're people who have paid for them, I mean like no shade on you if you do that. It's a pay to win game. That's fine. Do what you got to do. I don't pay to win. Uh... But if that means I can't even compete anymore, that's going to be super frustrating. So I'm going to try my hardest to do events like this to get that gear tier 18 without paying for it. But it, it, might, just, it might just suck for a little while, to be perfectly honest. I, I don't know how else to say it. Like, they're saying gear tier 18 is going to be revolutionary and an absolute game changer. I have to believe them. Uh, they want to sell things and that's the way to do it, right? So anyways... What you're going to do is play in war battles over the course of seven days or open training orbs. Now, they've been having so many training orbs events that I've only got, I think, 13 in the bank. So that's not going to be a super viable option for me. Obviously, I will open them, but that's only 26,000 points. That's not going to get us super far. Playing the war battles, however, you can do... Um, you only have to play. You don't have to win. So that's 1,000 points. As long as you complete it, you can't exit out before the battle is over. You can get 72,000 points from that. Now, that's interesting because I think over the course of a seven day, you're going to get four war battles at most, which means you need to be putting in 18 battles every single war to hit that limit of 72,000 points. That is a lot of warring. You are going to have to be spending resources 
I, I don't know that many people are actually going to hit that limit. And I'm actually kind of okay with that. I kind of like that the limit is a little bit higher. Like, you have to strive to get there as opposed to it being, like, actually inhibiting. So, do your absolute best with war battles. If you can't, you can open training orbs. But, I mean, this is the one to go for. Like, I've said in previous events, like, you know, sometimes you hit a wall where you're like, oh, if you can make it down to here, that's where the good stuff really is. But stop there. This one, like, you want to be getting as low on this list as humanly possible. So if you've got a bunch of training orbs and you're like, oh, I like to just dabble. No, like, sink them into this event. Get as many of these things as you can. You want gear tier 18. It will change your game. A I don't know how else to put it. Like, like spend everything you can on this event. Try and, and get down as low as you can on this event. Don't spend actual money. I mean, sorry, that's not fair. Do whatever you want. I'm not going to spend actual money. That's all I'm... Yeah. There is a leaderboard, so you can get even more um, augmented pieces. Uh, T2 level 5 ions if you make it up really high. Actually, 10, top 10%. That's, not, that's actually not terrible for the, the ions. Other than that, Korg is coming to the game starting on Monday. You can pay to receive him, so if you're inclined to do so, know that that's an option. It'll cost you 675 power cores if you want to unlock an orb for him, so go nuts. There are events happening in the next little while that care about spending power cores, so that's not the worst way to do it. Cosmic Crucible Season 3 will also be starting on Monday. Now, some people are very upset about this. All I have to say is make sure you go and change your defenses. Your defenses are still saved from the five-man tournament, which I had a great time with. I hope you guys did too. I ended up getting, I think, fourth in my bracket with a score of four, uh, four and one. The only person I lost to was Zombie Jesus, which I thought was actually really funny. I'm pretty okay losing to our Lord and Savior, if that's the way it's gonna be. So I thought that was a fun event. I hope it comes back at some point. That was really cool. Season three, a lot of people are really upset about, and I totally understand why they're upset. They are Scopely is completely making problems for this game and then selling us solutions to the problems that they made. Very frustrating, very annoying. Kind of comes with the game. Like, of course they want to sell you stuff. It is a game where they are trying to make money. It is a 100% a pay-to-win game, and I'm fine with that. What I don't like is when they have pay-to-play events. Those drive me insane. But if they're going to let you play this game for free and you can do the best you can for free, so be it. That's fine. The way that it's going to work is you're going to see the teams in Cosmic Crucible are going to be on a conveyor belt, essentially. So, like, rooms 5 and 6 are now rooms 3 and 4. And presumably, in next season, they'll be rooms 1 and 2. And then they'll be gone. So, like, if you absolutely can't stand playing against that Tangled Web team, you've got a couple more months of it, unfortunately. But you also have Gwenpool coming out, and because you know you have to deal with that Tangled Web team for a while, it's worth investing in Gwenpool because she can defeat that team. Again, I, I understand that they're selling you the problem that they selling you the solution to the problem that they created. Like I understand that that's kind of crappy, but I do kind of like the fact that I can invest in a character and know that they're going to be good for a while. Like say there's a team that's really good in room six on defense, you can build that team up really high and you know they're going to be good for like six months to nine months. That's not bad. That's that's not. I don't know. Everybody has their own things on it. I know uh, Run7, when he first heard that news, lost his mind. Uh, I think he's mellowed out on that. I, I, he seems to be maybe not happy with it, but, you know, less less pissed off about it. I just don't see it as, as big of a problem. I definitely understand what he's saying. Like, I would much rather theory craft Cosmic Crucible than just be told what teams to play. But I do like that they're giving you some reassurance that if you build up a team, they're going to be good for quite some time. I'm conflicted on it, but I'm leaning towards trying to be happy with it because I, there's already too many content creators that are just pissed off at this game constantly. So be it. The incursion rate is coming, and this is really cool. This is what they've been trying to build us up towards for quite some time. It does say that if you can do Doom on any level, so even if you're just doing Doom 1, you will have a chance in the incursion rate, which is fantastic. My Alliance, Get Lost Squidward, which I have been meaning to shout out for quite some time. I apologize, Adam. Here you go. Get Lost Squidward is the alliance that I have joined recently. I didn't name it, uh, is doing Doom 2 at the moment. So that means we will be able to do the incursion raids when they come out, and it seems like they are going to be a great way of getting really high gear and um, preparing us, I guess, more for like higher level Dooms, higher level incursion raids. So I'm really happy that this is not just for really end game players. Even like 
high end, high mid range players can can get in on this. So that's really cool. There are no hard requirements for entering uh, into the incursion raid, but they do recommend level 90, gear tier 15 plus, ability level 7, red star 5, and T2 level 3 plus ISO 8. That's pretty strongly built. It's not crazy, like gear tier 15 isn't so bad. Gear level 90 is a little high. I mean, obviously we can be at level 95 at the moment, so it's not even max level. Red star 5 plus is fine as long as it's not a super new character. Ability level 7, like, like it's, it's not terrible. Like, and this is just recommendations. You don't need to have this. This is not like the floor you need to get in on. This is just what they think will, be, will do well. As far as the raid lanes go, it's actually super confusing. I've looked at the map for a little bit. And I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. So I'm curious when this event starts, we can figure that out better. Um, as you can see, uh, there's no clear starting point. Like, I wonder if there's multiple starting points that are all these, like, mutant one, mutant one. Like, it looks like you, you have to start on a mutant node. Mutant, mutant, mutant. But then, like, this is just, like, a straight line. Right? Like, there's no other way to do that. Whereas this one kind of branches off a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. So you don't even have eight unique starting points on each one, assuming I'm, I'm even reading this properly. So you're going to have some overlap. That's okay, I guess. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't really know exactly how this is going to work. But as you can see, you got your mutant raids with a boss, bio, boss, skill, boss. We'll see. We'll just have to see what we can do each lane is going to have its own um well let's just get into it each raid lane requires one of five specific traits uh the lane will possess combat modifiers that apply to all the nodes in that lane and will affect either enemies or player characters some characters will thrive among these modifiers which means that you'll have to call upon a very specific team or theory craft a squad to overcome enemies i hope that's true i don't entirely believe them but i hope that's true the choice is yours. So prioritize your roster as you see fit. We'll be monitoring feedback and the impact on these modifiers and gameplay. If you see that they're falling short of their intent, we'll make adjustments to future incursion raids. Here are the combat modifiers of each lane. All right, so for the bio lane, we've got unstable serum. If the enemy characters crit, they're gonna change two of your, take away two of your charged. And if you dodge, they're gonna gain death proof. So that's pretty strong on both fronts. If a character, player character blocks, clear one random negative effect on that character. That's fantastic. If a player character has any negative effect, that character's dodge chance is reduced by 100%. So if you've got any negative effect, there's a real good chance you're going to take some damage. So be it. If you do manage to block, though, you'll clear the negative effect. So kind of counters it a little bit. Tech lane, experimental nanites. On ally assist, heal self and all enemy characters for 5% of this character's max health. Gross. I didn't catch that the first time, but healing all the enemy characters for 5% every time you assist is actually kind of brutal. So you kind of don't want to be assisting very much. On an enemy character's end of turn, clear all barrier on all player characters. On any player character's turn, clear defense up on that character. So it's going to be very, basically impossible to have defense up that actually matters very much. That's rough. Skill lane, interdimensional combat training. On enemy character crit, apply disrupted to all player character protectors. On enemy character turn, clear two charge from all player character blasters. Okay, so it matters what you're bringing into these lanes. This is interesting. Enemy characters cannot have defense down, minor defense down, offense down, or minor offense down applied to them. So they are going to have their defense up and their offense up if they want it. You're not going to be able to flip those abilities. Um, that's... The, this could be really interesting. I, I'm, hmm. There's gonna have to be some thought put into this. Mutant lane, Aegis of Apocalypse. On spawn, apply offense up to all enemy brawlers and blasters. Fine. On spawn, apply taunt to all enemy protectors. On spawn, apply regeneration for two turns to all enemy supports and controllers. So everybody's getting a buff of some kind. When an enemy character gains bleed, generate one ability energy for self or a random ally. That's actually a good one. Most of these are actually really bad for us. This is actually a good one. So, huzzah. On a player character's apocalypse, on a player character's apocalypse's turn, that apocalypse gains charge and fills speed bar by 20%. Okay, so you definitely want to bring your apocalypse in and you want to bring characters that can give bleed in. Is that the only one that actually has good stuff for characters? That's really weird. Mystic Lane, Unbound Dark Magics. 
On enemy character turn, clear revive once from all player characters. If revive once was cleared, generate three ability energy for self and all allies and clear all barrier from player characters. Sucks that you lose the barrier, but gaining the ability energy is quite nice. Player characters cannot have stealth applied to them. That's going to be rough. Enemy characters cannot have blind applied to them. Okay, so... It's interesting, they're definitely going to be making that a little bit trickier, as well as my understanding is you can apply almost like scourges to this event to make it harder. So not only is it going to be like incursion, difficulty, hard, but now you can go incursion, difficulty, hard, and apply a scourge to make it that little bit harder. So if you're just like, yeah, we just want to like bump ourselves up so we can get that next little reward point. My understanding is that's how that's going to work. For the rewards, more powerful than the power... Yeah, okay, so they're just talking about gear tier 18. You're going to get some gear tier 18 stuff. Um, after slugging your way through waves of enemies, you'll scoop up gold, orange gear raid, ability material, and raid season points for the node rewards. End of season rewards will include T2 ISO 8 credits, orange elite, teal gear, teal elite fragments, and teal epic fragments. It did say armory 18 orb fragments. They've scratched that out. So they wanted you to know, like, you're not crazy if you read it before, but it's not actually accurate for what's happening now. Just says the incursion raid begins soon, so prepare your roster. It doesn't actually give us a date, but I hope that it is as soon as they are saying it is. That would be nice. The next strike pass is coming out on, what's that, Tuesday? Wednesday. The, on Wednesday, and will feature Iron Fist World War II. The third Apocalypse Saga is going to give you Brawn Shards, as well as a few Hulk Shards. I think people were trolling them a little bit, saying they wanted Hulk, and they, they saw through that. So, as a compensation, they're going to give you a little bit of Hulk, but mostly Brawn Shards. So, that's good. I could still use some Brawn. Character Availability. This is fantastic. Kang and Iron Fist World War II are both entering all of the orbs, replacing Dagger and Iron Fist from the Mega Orb. Anytime I can get more Kang shards, I'm going to be very, very happy for it. He was a really hard unlock. I've only got him at three stars, but he is a powerhouse. Absolutely work towards getting your Kang. And now that he's a little bit easier, that should be great. Red Star promotions are coming soon for Fire Star. And you can use gold and silver promotion credits to unlock further of hers. And there's nothing at the bottom here. Because it's all at the top. So we're done. All right, thank you for watching. This is coming out on Sunday because I was busy all day Saturday at a Marvel Crisis Protocol tournament. Managed to take first place and our local store got more players than it's had in quite some time. So that was wonderful to see. Bunch of new faces that I was really happy to see come out. It's always great to see the community growing on that one. So thank you everybody for coming out to that. That was a lot of fun. As far as people watching this video, I really appreciate you making this far into it. If you've made it this far, please consider giving it a like or even subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future content. I will be doing a video very shortly on the Nova Trials. They are a little bit glitched, so it's a little easier to get him right now, but they're going to re... I, my understanding is they're going to make a second one that'll be running, I think, concurrently with the one that is going on now. But the one that is going on now does not have a leaderboard attached to it because it is bugged, and the one starts later on this week will have a leaderboard. So if you can do both of those events and there's a leaderboard attached to the second one, it looks like this could be actually a really nice way to get quite a few stars for Nova, and he's going to be a very strong character to have, so you're definitely going to want those stars. Check out that video when it comes out. I'll show you how to run through the event. I've already unlocked him at three stars. You can too. I'll show you how. Love you guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. Oh, actually, one last thing. Here, check this out. This is really cool. Uh, how do I get rid of the blur effects? Um, off. Can you guys see this? This showed up in the mail the other day. This is a Kickstarter for Marvel Zombicide, because I am a Marvel nerd. Uh, this I paid for like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. It finally showed up the other day, and I was so giddy. I don't know how... Can you... This is a two-foot-tall Galactus model that I'm going to be painting up at some point over the next year, probably. It's going to take a while. I am an okay painter, but not a great one. And I'm going to be learning how to use my airbrush and figuring it out and hopefully making this guy look as cool as humanly possible. He is ridiculous. He's... I don't even know what to do with him. Like, he's too big for any of my shelves at the moment. Like, for scale, you can see, like, this is my um, Samsung phone. And I can, like, rest it in his hand. That's so cool. I love this guy. I I don't even know what I'm going to do with him, but he's going to be a display piece for display piece for sure somewhere in the game room. I think that's awesome. Anyways, cheers guys. Have a good one.